possession mm-hmm. as a notion. I think it's, a, it's one of the most early experiences I had was watching uh, various films of the early 60s and late 50s, and they were always about possession then. They were always about people being taken over, being taken over by someone. And uh, it had a huge effect on me, especially the movie Invasion of the Body Snatchers, classic yeah. movie. And there's a scene where the little boy called Jimmy Grimaldi runs away from his mother. The doctor stops and says, what are you doing? Why are you running away? She's not my mother. Of course she's your mother. And I, that really, I thought, oh my God, that, that whole thing with childhood. And I talked about how I think if you love horror and you like the, writing this kind of stuff, it tends to be to do with your childhood. You know, the, it's kind of like reliving your, your dreams as a child, your nightmares. And I think horror movies are very much grown up fairy tales. So uh, they have a c- fantastic connection to childhood. And Graham Greene said that the childhood is the writer's secret gold mine, which I believe to be true. So uh, that scene of the boy running away summed up a lot for me. It's something like, gosh, yes, that incredible free song, thinking maybe the people I trust aren't, aren't going to look after me. And, and that had a big effect on me. Have you kind of seen any examples of this possession in modern horror? Yeah, I think it's always been a theme in horror. Absolutely. I'm trying. Well, I mean, apart from the else, Invasion of the Body Snatchers has always been remade. I mean, there was a remake only a year ago. Well, it didn't do very well. With Nicole Kidman didn't do very well. But that theme is always around. I'm trying to think of a. Yeah, I'm sure there are lots of examples of it. I mean, if you look at <coughs> something. Well, if you look at the Saw movies, it isn't about possession. But it is about someone trying to possess someone's mind. And it's not just the body thing, it's mind. I mean, you know, he's trying to play with your mind and get in there and make you doubt your certainties. That's part of it. I mean, it's not just about people's limbs being hacked off. So I think it's much cleverer than that. Um, what other, other kind of other? Oh, well, I guess something like The Sixth Sense and The Others, they're not about possession exactly, but they're very much about life and death. Um, I'm trying to think of what it would be the great possession movie of our time, presumably The Exorcist or something like that. Okay. But yeah. not, it's not of our time, I mean yeah. another old... It's such a constant theme. What, what about um, horror as a genre? Do you think it's taken seriously? In more the, than it was in many ways. He was just saying there are more academic books about horror. Now, mm-hmm. I've just redone my book, Heritage of Horror, and it's twice as long as it was. But I originally mm-hmm. wrote it, when I was, before I became a screenwriter, I originally wrote it when I was a teenager. It was about one of about three books on horror at that point. And no one had ever written about British horror. No one had ever written about Hammer, ever. I was the first. Now, there are probably 30 books on Hammer and endless books. So in a way, it's been taken seriously as an academic subject. Um, and I think it's sort of come out in from the cold as a genre to some extent. Yeah, I, obviously, some people hate horror and can't stand it. And they usually have the wrong idea of what it is. People who don't like horror think it's just about watching road accidents. You know, you're just ghoulish. <laughs> and in fact, it's not like that at all. It's fairy tales. Yeah. It's absolutely the essence of narrative. It's the most strongly narrative-based story. They're just some creepy stories, really. And where are you based? Are you well, I'm based in London and Somerset. Although I've still, my family home is still in St Andrews in Fife, okay. where I grew, was brought up. It's still there. Okay, so I mean, my mother's still there. What, what, about your, <laughs> what about your opinions on uh, like domestic horror? You know, in, in the UK. Yeah. Any, well, I think it's looking very promising. I thought Eden Lake, which just won a prize at the Citrus Horror Festival, where I was on the jury, very, very interesting film. A complete departure from horror movies here. It suddenly it took Essex and made it like the Americans do with Texas, a sort of alien landscape, and raised all sorts of interesting issues and. Uh, I think I'm always hopeful that the horror film here will revive. It's went through some terrible times, of course. I mean, if you look at it, the 70s, I think there were 180 horror movies, or something, no, maybe less, 120 horror movies made. The 90s, there were about nine. <laughs> the whole industry yeah. was wiped out. And now it's just becoming back a little bit. People are beginning to rethink about, to re familiarize themselves with the genre. So I think there's hope, and certainly for horror itself since what happened with horror worldwide was in 1998 there were very few horror films about six released the whole slasher thing was coming to an end the form was coming to an end 1999 came along we had the sixth sense and the others exploded suddenly the form was accessible to women it was accessible to teenagers it was there was opened again it, up, yes. it had been a very rarefied it had become a very rarefied male domain suddenly it was blown wide open lots and lots of uh, different subdivisions of horror. It's a very broad church. 
So I think from that point of view, completely revitalised everything. You got to a point where if you take 1998 as an eight year, and then you've got the Sixth Sense and the others, and by 2003, I think you'll find about 30 horror films in release in, in 2000, maybe a bit later, 2006, sorry. There are about 30 horror films. It's huge. I mean, they've gone up times 10, you know. Yeah. I don't mean British horror films, just internationally. And that's huge. I mean, even in the height of the old horror boom in 1960, when Psycho and uh, Peeping Tom came out, they were only about 17 or 18 a year. I mean, in a, in a, yeah, a year, a year. So, yeah, I think it's been really, really auspicious in the sense that yeah, totally. it may peak. It always does. <laughs> and there have been a few flops lately, uh, like Hostel 2 was a flop. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but, but, I mean, I, I like the Hostel 2. I like the Hostel series, but I, it was, uh, didn't do as well as they'd hoped. They spent a lot of money on it. Do you but, like the, the Saw series? Yes, I do. Yeah. I think they're very, uh, very ingenious and elaborate and uh, interesting and quite extraordinary really it's dynastic you know it gets more and more weird like a huge gothic novel opening yeah. into strange sort of ramifications you really don't know what's going on yeah and they're very clever I don't, I don't think Saw is just about weird you know just about mutilation or anything. I would be bored stiff if it was about that I don't even like that stuff much it's all about mind games tricks and illusions and so that's what's so clever about it 